coming up on this week's Word for Thought, why God hears and answers our prayers, and why sometimes He doesn't. Plus what the Bible says about how to be more effective in our prayer life. Lock in. Hey, what's going on? Thank you for tuning in once again. I'm Solomon here at Word Made Fresh, where we're simply building a community of everyday believers who are sharpening one another and encouraging one another with the word of truth. If that sounds like you, we invite you to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. And for our current subscribers, we want to say thank you. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. Prayer is powerful. We know that, but it's probably you know, one of the most underestimated aspects of our faith and certainly is one of the most powerful weapons we have at our disposal when it comes to spiritual warfare. And so it's probably why, you know, in Luke 18, 1, the Bible says men ought always to pray. So what are the keys to an enhanced prayer life? First and foremost, we want to make sure that we are praying according to the will of God. In 1 John 5, 14 through 15, where the Bible reads this, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. He makes it very clear when we pray according to his will, then we have the petitions that we desired of him. He hears us and he answers those prayers is because it's what he wants. Oftentimes we go to him in prayer, you know, asking him what we want and what we need. When Romans 8, 26 helps us to understand a lot of times we don't even know how to pray. We don't even know what we need. It says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So praying according to the will of God is a for sure way to make sure that he hears me and he answers me. Secondly, even though if we pray according to the will of God, we still have to make sure we have the right intention or the right motivation for our prayer. Because James 4.3 tells us this, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lust. Listen, you can pray according to the will of God all you want to, but if you have the wrong intention or the wrong motivation behind that prayer, God is still not willing for you to receive what you're asking for, because that's a prayer according to the flesh. And that's why in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, he says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit a fleshly prayer or a prayer that's according to the lust of the flesh is not a prayer in the spirit and we know we can't do anything in our flesh that pleases god according to romans 7 as well god knows our hearts he's not about to give you or answer a prayer where you've already made up your mind that you're going to do what you want to do you're going to take what he gives and do with it what you want to do with it instead of doing what you need to do that is according to his will you know, you're not fooling him at all. And so the Bible says that you ask amiss. He's not in the business of answering those type of prayers. Thirdly, I probably think this one goes without even saying, but we'll mention it anyway. When I pray, I must pray in faith. Uh, listen to what James 1, 6 says. It says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. The Bible simply says, listen, if you go to God in prayer, you might as well go to him in faith. Otherwise, you shouldn't go at all because without faith, it is impossible to please him as uh, Hebrews eleven six 6 tells us. So I have to pray in faith. And Mark eleven twenty four 24 reads it this way. Therefore, I say unto you that what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Now, before we go with that name it and claim it, no, we have to be consistent in our interpretation of the Bible and look at prayer in the whole scope. Well, we're praying according to the will of God. If we believe that he says that we're going to have the things that we pray for when they're according to his will, then we'll receive those things. Listen, God is not obligated to keep a promise that he did not make. So you can't say, God, you didn't answer my prayer. And, you know, you say, if I have faith, I'll get these things. We're in this word that he says he's going to give that to you. No. And so when we pray according to his will, like we said previously, he will answer those prayers when we pray in faith. And then last but certainly not least. The primary reason God does not hear my prayers is found in Psalm 66, 18. And it's just basically when I have unconfessed sin that's in my heart. Listen to what it says. It says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. God says, I can't hear that prayer. I'm not going to answer that prayer because sin is a fellowship breaker, though the relationship may be there still. The fellowship is not there. And so when I go to him, hey, there's a blocker of the communication between me and my heavenly father. And so he doesn't hear me. So I have to get rid of that sin. That's why Proverbs 28, 13 says this. 
He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. You just don't prosper when there's unconfessed sin. And that includes prospering even in your prayer life. Unless you're going to him and asking him to forgive you for sin and help you to, uh, you know, repent. He's not going to hear you. Sin is a prayer killer. That's just facts. And so that's why 1 John 1, 9 tells us that we have to confess our sins. And he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that fellowship can be restored along with our prayer life. Hey, and that's it. Those are some keys to an enhanced prayer life and making sure that our prayers are heard and answered and what to do when they're not. I'm pretty sure you may have some insight as well. Feel free to drop that down in the comments. And for you who are new, have not subscribed, please, we invite you to subscribe. Hit that notification bell as well. And until next time, don't forget to learn the word, live the word, and share the word. Word.